Hi, Nancy here, and today I want to talk about short rows. My friend Anna told me we needed to do a video on short rows. And short rows are something that you will use as you become more advanced in your knitting, and they give you a lot of options uh, for fit and sizing your garment. A lot of scarf and shawl patterns are incorporating short rows. And one of the the biggest, the biggest uses for short rows is shoulder shaping and back shaping. You can also use them on set-in uh, sleeve caps. And what it does, it eliminates the stair-step bind-off. And anybody who's done a sweater knows what I'm talking about. You bind off five, finish the row, you go back, you bind off five, and you end up with the stair-step appearance, which is rather difficult to put in a decent shoulder seam and it doesn't give the nice slope that you you would really desire so doing short rows eliminates those problems and it also gives you a little extra fabric you can use short rows to uh, add a little more length in the back of a sweater as they ride up you can use it for the bust any place where you want a little more fabric and the nice part is it doesn't change your roll count it just puts the extra fabric where you need it so I'm going to show you how to do it we're going to do five stitches uh, or I should say we're going to do a five stitch short row so we're going to pretend my pattern is telling us that we need to bind off five stitches at the beginning of the row and we would assume then that we were going to bind off five stitches on the beginning of a wrong side row because that's the direction we will be heading and that's where we're going to be making our first turn. You can use short rows in any pattern. If you understand them, you can incorporate them very easily. Okay, so five stitches. Two, four, five. All right. So we will slip this the fifth stitch from the left needle on to the right as if to purl. We're going to bring the working yarn back in between the needles to the front. We're going to replace that slip stitch onto the left needle. Now we're going to turn. And in all good theories, these stitches are as good as bound off. Okay? Now we're going to bring the working yarn to the front as it should be for a purl stitch but what you want to do is give a little extra pull here so you tighten up the slack from that wrap we're going to take care of those later but for now you want to make sure you don't have too much fabric there okay so we're going to go down same as before we're going to bind off or i'm sorry we're going to do a wrap and turn for five stitches on the other side Okay, and two, four, five, one more hurt to go. Okay. All right. Now, this would assume that the pattern said bind off five stitches on the right side row. So we are going to take the fifth stitch, slip as if to purl from the left needle to the right. We're going to put the working yarn to the opposite direction, which is between the needles towards the back. We're going to replace the slip stitch, and then we're going to turn our work. Now we've got it back in position for a knit row, and we're going to go our merry way along here. Okay, and there's the wrap. It really sticks out, and it doesn't do so easily on a purl row, but it does on a knit row. So let's see how far we've got here. We're going to go down and to four stitches okay so we'll have nine on each side when we're done here okay so we're gonna pretend this is shoulder so here we are two four six eight nine we're going to slip as if to purl bring the working yarn to the front replace we're going to turn bring the yarn back in front of the needles we're going to give it a little bit of a pull so we can get rid of the slack and then we're going to purl down two I have a lot of stitches here two four six eight even went a little too far okay so now we're going to purl down to 
the ninth. Two, four, six, eight, nine. Okay, so we're going to slip as if to purl, put the yarn opposite direction, replace the stitch, turn. All right, so now I'm just going to knit one stitch here so you can get a good look at this. You can see here, very evident on the knit side, are the wraps. If we didn't do anything with them, they would be very visible. If this was a garter stitch pattern, the rule always is perform it but ignore it. And the reason for that is you wouldn't really need to neaten these wraps because garter stitch has purl bars in front of stitches all over the place. So you wouldn't need to go through that extra effort. So there's really no reason to neaten them unless a pattern tells you to do so. But you have to neaten them when you're on the reverse stocking it or you are on uh, stocking it on the knit side. So now that's what we're going to do. We're going to neaten these. And it's pretty obvious where they are, both sides. You also have a little space here, but that will close up once we neaten those edges. So here we go. All right, here's our first wrap. You're going to go in to that wrap from the front towards the back, just like you do a knit stitch. Then you're going to reach and get the actual knit stitch, okay? And you're going to bring that through both off the needle. Okay, we've taken care of one wrap. Now we're going to go down and they kind of jump out at you here. Okay, here's our next wrap. In, in, bring your working yarn back through and off your needle. So let's finish this row. Okay. So we have one side of our wraps complete, okay? And that looks very nice. Even on this side, you really can't see that extra fabric. And this is pretty thick yarn. So if it was going to show up, it, it definitely would. Alright, so the pearl wraps are a little more difficult to spot. So once we get over the little hump here, we'll look a little more closely for them. And down we go. And like I say, a lot of times if you see just that space in there, it's usually a heads up. Okay, so two, four, five, all right. There's one wrap on the pearl side, if you can see it. And there's our other wrap on the pearl side. So they really are hidden in there. They, they aren't as easy to find. If you're ever in doubt, flip it over and then you can see, oh yeah, there it is on the knit side. All right, I'm going to take my right needle and go in from the back side of that wrap and I'm just going to plop it up on the needle with the next stitch to be purled, the one, the actual stitch it's been wrapping and then I'm going to purl the two together. Okay? And we're going to go down a couple more here to get to the next one. And let's make sure I'm going to even, we're going to double check it because it's really difficult to see. There's that little angle but we're going to flip it around and there's our wrap, so we're going to reach from behind, and then we're going to purl it together. And finish our row, okay, and let's spread it out and see what we've got. And those will kind of fidge with those a little bit. Now this is the wrap and turn short rows. Um, I've also got a video on Japanese short rows, which I really enjoy doing. But for most of you, the first one you'll attempt is going to be the wrap and turn. And that's how you do it.